guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Professor Inventus and normally I would be at capital E doing some wondering about the world around us. But right now everything's really different and I'm stuck inside so I thought I would do some wondering in my home. Today I'm wondering about energy. E N E R G Y. Well, what do we know about energy already? I don't know much at all. I do know that when you do cooking on the stove, you're using energy. I know that when I flick a switch on the wall, that the light comes on because the light is full of energy. And I know that when I use a car to go from place to place, the car is being pushed around using energy. But there's actually energy in all sorts of places. If you take one hand and your other hand and you throw both hands at each other, you might find energy gets released. Oh, I heard it. Energy can make a sound. It's sort of like a popping balloon or an explosion when you throw your hands together. That energy came out of your hands and went into the air as sound. What if you take your one hand, your other hand, you throw them together and then you rub them on each other like this, up and down. Faster, faster. The more I rub my hands together, the more energy collects in the middle. At first they feel a bit warm, and eventually they get really, really hot. So I know I can hear energy as it collects in my hands. I know that I can feel the energy as they get warm, but do I get to see it? Well, at home you might have trouble seeing energy from your hands, but I have with me here a very special toy. It's a funny little thermometer. At the bottom there's a glass ball and another glass ball at the top. They're connected by a glass tube and they are sealed tightly. Now if I put the bottom ball in my palm of my hot hot hand we can see the energy going into the liquid inside. The bubbles are being pushed up by the energy that's in my arms. Energy being transferred from one place to another. Here is an experiment that you could do outside if you have a little ball and a big ball with you. Uh, now my big ball's really flat and I don't have any way of pumping it up so when I drop it it's not going to bounce very high. There's a lot of energy in it, being pulling it down, and when it hits the ground, the energy stays in the ball, and it has nowhere else to go, so it stretches it, and it bounces it back up. I'll try again. The same thing happens to my little ball, but because my little ball is really small, it doesn't need much energy, only a little tiny bit of energy to bounce it a bit higher. Now, if I want my little ball to bounce higher still, I can use my arm to add energy to the pull of gravity. I'm going to use my arm and give it a bit more energy. Oh, I can get it to bounce even higher by really... But what I really want to show you is an energy transfer experiment. When I take energy from a big object, like a power plant or a machine, and I transfer it into a small object, like a stove or a light bulb in your house. So I'm going to put the two balls together, and I'm going to drop them without adding any force. Ready? Whoa. Oh! Ah! Oh! Another way that you could transfer energy from your hands to see just how much energy there is is with a stick. Now this stick is quite special and hard to come by right now. It's got propeller blades on top of it. When I put my hands together, the 
energy on my skin as I push my hands past each other turns into rotational, spinning or turning energy, and it drives the helicopter. So when I rub them together, instead of getting collected as warmth, they fly the helicopter for me. So, I have energy in my hands. The energy in my hand comes from my arm. The energy in my arm comes from my body. But where does my body get its energy from? I mean, I know that my toys, like my remote control car, has a battery in it, but I don't have a battery. Hmm, my car that I get driven in runs on a petrol tank, but I don't have a petrol tank. How do I get energy in my body? Hmm. <gasps> I get my energy from this banana. I put the banana in my mouth, I chew it up, it goes down into my belly where I have my own special fuel tank. That's great to know. This is where I get my energy from, from my food. But if I get my energy from a banana, then where does a banana get its energy from? Is a banana made in a factory? Are they swinging on conveyor belts, hanging from the ceiling, waiting to be filled with a banana pump, and then sealed up around the edges, glued shut, like with this wrapper, so that we can use them? Hmm. A banana actually is made on a banana tree. I knew that. But if a banana gets its energy from a banana tree, then how does a banana tree get its energy? Well, a banana tree gets its energy in the most sensible way. To find the energy that a banana tree makes, I will have to use my special energy finding hat. This hat, which I've ingeniously invented, has a special panel on the front. This panel works a lot like the leaf on a banana tree. It collects energy, and when it finds energy, this special hat is going to tell me that there's energy around. Energy, Ooh. energy, energy. I can hear it now. Energy, energy. There must be energy, energy. somewhere nearby. Energy, Wait a energy, minute. energy. Colder, colder. No, not colder. that one. Where's the energy? Warmer, warmer, oh. warmer, 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 warmer. Very warm, very warm. Colder, 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 colder. Freezing. Turn around. Warmer, warmer. We found the energy. It comes from a star in our sky, the sun. The banana tree uses its leaves to turn the energy from the sun into fuel. It fills itself up with energy and it puts the energy into its fruit. When I eat the fruit, I get the energy that came from the tree, which came from the sun. All of the energy in our bodies and in our homes and in our cars and in our schools comes from the sun. Thanks for joining us, guys. Uh, before I go, I thought I would introduce to you my favorite assistant, Dr. Pooh. Now, Dr. Pooh is going to join us for a recap of all the things we learned today. And the main thing is this. Where, Doctor, does all of our energy come from? The sun. That's right. It comes from our one big star, the sun. Now, the other thing we're going to do is a challenge for you. I've got with me a balloon. And Dr. Pooh has got a balloon. We're going to blow up our balloons. We're going to pinch our balloons. And we're going to hold it up to the camera. Pinch your balloon. Hold it up to the camera. And we're going to let go of our balloons. Okay, ready? On three. One, 
two, three. <laughs> now, when we fill a balloon with energy and then we release the energy, there is no way of knowing where the energy is going to take the balloon. It's almost like it just runs around aimlessly, like it's had a whole lot of lollies and Easter eggs, and it, yeah. it's full of energy, but it doesn't have any way of using it. So my challenge to you is to take your balloon and using all of the things you've got on you in your house, like rubber bands and string and clips and, and uh, this thing and scissors and uh, mm -hmm. tape and and, uh, and, and pizza, pizza. Um, you need to turn your balloon into something different. So we're going to try to turn our balloons either into a tool, which is something that does a job for us. So when the energy is released, perhaps the balloon brings us our breakfast or delivers our mail, or we can turn our balloon into a toy. Now, a toy is something that's just for fun. So if you can turn your balloon into something really wonderful, then perhaps share a photo with capital E, and uh, I'd love to see what your balloon can do. Thanks for joining us. From Dr. Pooh and from me, Professor Inventus, I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.